This is Street Chance on SWBN TV. We are enjoined to say to the righteous, it is well with you. Therefore, I say to you, most cherished viewer, it is well with you. And let me wholeheartedly welcome you to yet another interesting edition of Street Chance on SWBN TV. We are... Pastor Timothy. And Comfort Isaac. The pleasure remains ours to share this moment with you. As it is written, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Therefore, the task of maintaining our hearts in pure state for the purpose of seeing God becomes a major goal to pursue for an accomplishment. Following this, we went to the streets to ask uh, people how pure their hearts are and why they say so. Believe me, our people were amazing with their responses. Come and let's watch. My name is Francis, and truly, my heart is not pure. I have so much of me. And when you have so much load on you, it transcends into your heart. And it, it makes you have a heavy heart. Because with the economy we face, the way things are now, the inflation is too high. So you, with the little money you have, you buy, with much money you have, sorry, you buy little things. You understand, to take care of your family and do one of some miscellaneous expenses is not something to go by these days. So that's why I'm telling you today that my heart is heavy and my heart is not pure because I think so much. As you can see, I was going somewhere until you stopped me. So, so I am telling you that it is somewhere, my thinking is somewhere to get something so that I can take good care of my home. I'm Peace Malaki of you. I have a pure heart because I'm a child of God. I like making people feel, feel comfortable around me. I don't like to harm people. My name is Figgy Johnson. My heart is pure because I'm social to people and I don't have any problem in my heart. So I'm always free. So that's why I'm saying my heart is pure. I'm only too religion. Uh, to me, I don't know to Christianity is more than it's much bigger than Christian and Muslim. I was a Muslim from the beginning. I read Quran. At the age of nine, I finished reading the Quran. But by today, 19 years ago, I become Christian. And my son, even my wife, baby, because of that, went my body. So my son and daughter, they always ask me, engineer, what do you use? Say, by how? Your senior brothers, sisters, they are late. What is the of your living as a no? It's by the grace of Jesus, by the grace of God. I got my uh, I cannot say, but God knows. My name is Tunde Ore. So when you talk about pure of heart, like my brother have said, it depends on the individual. It may not be what we what they preach, what we hear. Um, we don't even practice uh, uh, Christianity. Let us face the fact. Let us be rational in terms of thinking. We don't even have. I don't think they have to twenty percent of Christian. Their heart is not pure. Even the people who call themselves pastor, bishop, their heart is not pure because what what they are after now now is money. It's a family affair. Okay, so pure heart is individual. It's not what we hear because we don't even practice it. If God, if God allowed us to be seeing our heart, there will be more killing. I think uh, God, like God, give me that call, not human being, not what I heard from this and that. It's God. I don't even sleep in hospital. I don't even go to hospital. Go to do what? If I, if I had anything, I would just call on God, and that's what I believe. I call on God. I don't call on. I don't say because I'm worshiping in a church, I must go and worship pastor, bishop. No, it's God that I worship. So I anticipated Christian to be like that. That we should practice pure Christianity, not just uh, money, 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 money. No, no, no. Truly, truly enlightening to be able to put these issues in the proper scriptural perspectives. Let's go to Abbasephon to invite the studio guests to do the needful. Abbasephon, it's all yours. All right, viewer. Yet again, I introduce to us our. Uh, studio guest, an Ajakuta-based minister of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, 
who has traveled wide to across different nations preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Um, he's an engineer by profession, Brother Timothy Adebayo. Good to have you on the show, sir, and God bless you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Okay, so we are delighted to have you on this special program, Street Chat. So, sir, very quickly, we are going to delve into the um, focus for today. And uh, we have our conversations is going to be centered around purity of heart. So, sir, before we, while we drive these boats, what is the meaning of purity of heart according to scriptures? Thank you very much. What it means to be pure in heart according to the scripture. It is very good to start from understanding what purity means itself before we apply it to the heart. Purity on the same as a normal English word means to be free from all manner of adulteration. Freedom from immorality or sexual nature usually is associated with purity. When the Bible says purity, so to be pure in heart, as it is written in the book of Matthew, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart. That primarily is talking of a mind, that heart in that conscience. It's not just the heart that beats, but it is the life of the person. To be pure means that to be free of offense from inside. The Lord Jesus Christ at a time was addressing the Pharisee. He said to the Pharisee when they were asking him why the disciples of John wash their hand, but the disciple of Jesus does not wash their hand when they want to eat. And Jesus responded by telling them that they are also disobeying God by their tradition. When they got home, the disciple now asked Jesus, they said, Master, we want to understand this thing more. Then Jesus now told them, you should know that it is not those things that enter into man that defile the man. That is to say that it is not the food that we eat that actually is referred to as defilement. But it is those things that come from inside man. So, and Jesus now begins to enumerate. He said, from the mind of man comes envy. Jealousy, bitterness, quarreling. He said it comes from the heart. And it is this thing that defiles man. So when we are now talking about purity in the heart, that means the heart that is free from offense, the heart that is free from envy, the mind that is risen, we follow the divine nature of God to see the goodness of God in situation and apply it. That is basically what Jesus is saying by blessed are the pure in heart. They that see in the way God sees. They whose heart is not endowed with offense. They whose mind is not corrupted and out of their mouth does not come up foul words. Words that are not a defined, words that pollute people, those are the people that are considered pure in heart. Okay, sir. So what's the implication for not being pure in heart? That's also a very important question. Implication for not pure in heart. I we always want to take my reference from the first, from the practical natural thing as God created everything element. God created man and created all the substances thereof. The these are the 
why is it that when the heart is not pure, what, what really happened? Let us look at something. When God created any substance, that substance we have the best of his performance in the purest state. And every substance that have impurity inside it cannot perform the way the creator wants it to perform. That is from the first point of view. Secondly, you realize that when God gave commandment to Moses in Exodus chapter 12, cha chapter 12, and we read from verse, uh, verse 5, the Lord instructed him concerning the animal that was to be used for the Passover, which is a sacrifice symbolic of Jesus Christ. And one of the things is that the animal must be pure, must be free of offense. That means for it to be useful for spiritual application to carry divine nature and spiritual contents, purity is very, very important. It must be pure. It must be without blemish from inside to outside. So it is very, very significant. So when we are talking with respect to uh, Christianity, we respond to the testimony of Jesus Christ. When a person is not pure, he is already limited from carrying the glory of God and the spiritual nature of God cannot work effectively inside him. So, sir, what are the things that actually hinder us, from your own understanding, the things that hinder us from you know, being pure in heart? We read from uh, when we read from 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, John was trying to explain about challenge that man has. He said, number one, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, mm. and the pride of man. He summarizes it, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, summarizes it into those three elements you realize that the pursuit of life, the desire to possess life outside God, make man to do so many things outside the way God actually desire that man should behave. In the professional setup, when a man is going actual, act, out of professional ethics, we say that they are cutting edges. That means they are trying to put in some things that does not pertain to professional ethics. So they are putting corruption into it and things will not run away. So when we bring it to the context of the spiritual, the first thing is that when, our, when there is a pride of life, we see ourselves too heavy. When they insult us, we will insult them. When a man is insulted, you know, or a man is provoked, the response is that he will react to that provocation. And out of the abundance of his own heart, those things will come. So if there is no defamation inside, it will not come out. It's a blessed that the meek. The meek is somebody that you provoke, you do many things to him, but in their meekness and in their gentleness, they don't react. But when there are the defilement inside, there will be reaction, pride of life. Then you talk about the loss of flesh. What people see, you know, in the book of John, uh, 4 John chapter 1, John was talking of the thing that he has seen with his eyes, the thing that he has touched with his hand, he has heard it with his ears, concerning the things of life. You see that by all this way, information enter into man. What you see, what you hear, what you touch, what you feel. And those constitute the loss, the desire of man to meet up with those things, to satisfy the flesh. They are also responsible 
for all this problem. You know, the desire of man remove man from focusing where God wants them to focus. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the faith, the appetite, what the flesh wants, what the flesh enjoys, adultery, fornication, the flesh enjoys, it is sweet to them. Those are the things that are actually responsible unto this thing. When those ones are removed, you see the, the heart will be pure. So we'd like to know, in your considerations, who should be pure in heart? Who should be pure in heart? Yes. From, the, from the beginning, uh, I will start from uh, the scripture. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. He said, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. We are Christ seated. If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, he said that we have been raised together with Jesus Christ and we have been made to sit together with the Lord Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly places. Therefore, from these two scriptures, Anybody who knows that his business is Christ, whose mind is to set his mind where God put him, should be pure in mind, in heart. Number two, as we have said, every element performed in this best state when they are pure and without contamination. Even ordinary water, ordinary water that we drink that is available around us. When they are contaminated with dirt and we put them inside to freeze. When the water is frozen, the impurity will be expelled and congregated in only one section, and the pure water will come out. That is nature. So anybody who wants to retain the true nature of God, it is the true nature of God that carries the anointing and the spiritual element in man. Many people have been saying, oh, why is there no anointing? Why is the power of God not flowing? The reality is that the power of God cannot flow when the inside of man is not pure. Man must be in this state with God ordained to be to enable him to retain the glory of God and the power of God. So those people that must be pure in mind are those who consider it as a primary requirement, Christ is their primary requirement and to look unto Christ. Two, those people who know that it is essential and they look unto Christ, divine grace, divine anointing, and the power of God, they want it so that they will demonstrate Christ on this earth. Those are the people that will now consider it of great necessity to be pure in heart. Now, I want, to, I want to draw something out of my experience over time. I realized that many people do not know that when the mouth of people are loose, you can easily be provoked, you can curse people, you can abuse people there, for such people, no matter what level you have put yourself, whether a bishop, a pastor, there is a limit to which the anointing of God can flow in that life. Why? Because the mouth is the sword that drives the power of God onto the outside. So if the mouth, if the heart is, is, is not pure, you say a word and it destroys other people. So any people, anybody that knows that there is a desire in them to retain the glory of God, to demonstrate the power of God, they must 
exercise themselves to be pure in heart. He said, blessed are the pure in heart. They will hear the heart. These are very, very essential. Without it, without holiness, we can't see God. Uh, you've, you've given a wide perspective of um, insights to this topic matter. To bring into a um, very clear you know, uh, perspective, so I want you to give us um, reasons why, from God's standpoint, why we should be pure in heart. This question also can be derived from some of the things that I have said, why we should be pure in heart. The first thing is that we want to carry the glory of God and demonstrate his power. We want to carry the glory of God and demonstrate his power. The second thing is that we want to see God. I'm picking it from a practical perspective. Why many people cannot flow with the gift of the Holy Spirit is because of the state of mind. It's because of the heart condition. For instance, the Spirit of God will give the word of knowledge. It is the same heart that will bring the word of God as the word of knowledge. If the man is defiled, the man is defiled, there will be confusion. And that is primarily responsible for confusion that they be uh, disposed to certain uh, by to certain level the, the the spirit of god cannot flow in such a heart so in order for us to see god to communicate god to hear of god one must be pure in heart Okay, I think this will be the last question we have with us. What should we do to stay pure in hearts? Let me pick it from the scripture. In the book of Leviticus chapter, chapter 8 and chapter 9, God wanted Moses, the priest, to carry his glory at the opening of the false tabernacle ceremony. That was the tabernacle when it was raised, the fire came out, Nadab and Abihu died. And in order for them to be able to stand before God, to bear this glory of God, they must pass through process of consecration for seven days. Part of the process of this consecration is that for seven days, they will not go out of the tabernacle. Because if they go out, they will die. That is isolation. Free from, uh, from uh, environmental influences. That's number one. I will pick from the New Testament. We knew about John the Baptist that baptized Jesus Christ. The Bible says he was a man of wilderness. We were told of the type of his food. His food is locust and uh, white honey. That speak a lot of spiritual thing. A man of the wilderness. What does it mean? A man that lived in a solitary place whose business is God only. So the, the prophet in those days, they are not concerned about the ceremony of the king's house. Jesus was talking at a time. He said, why won't do you go to the wilderness to see? Is it a man that is clothed with a, a gorgeous clothing? He said, you want to see that one, you will go to the king's house, king's palace. He said, but if you want to see a prophet, a person consecrated and ordained of God to bring the mind of God to the people who can see him in the wilderness. And John is truly a man consecrated for that. 
That is the second thing. That is to say that what enters us determines the level of purity. Jesus, the, Jesus said, it's not the food that we eat, but the thing that comes from us. But the thing that comes from inside us also are put inside it by what we see through the loss of the eye, through the loss of the flesh, and through the pride of life. So, what is re the requirement to stay consecrated and to stay our mind being pure is number one. We must, as a matter of sincere, from environment where those filthiness exists. In our place of work, you suddenly discover a group of people like to speak funny things on healthy and on uh, ethic, on ethical world, immoral world. You can't stay in that environment, and your mind, your heart will not be defiled. That's number. It's not possible. So we can be working. We can be in the office. We can be in the factory. Yet. Our mind can be so dedicated, and we are more or less like a man that is living in a wilderness. We are living in an environment with Christ. When we do it, we will stay in the purity of our hearts. Now, when we live that life of consecration, we will determine the kind of environment that we allow our mind to be free. The mind of man cannot be empty. So we now need to equip it with the word of God. The scripture say that how will a young man make his way to be pure? He said by meditating upon the word of God. You know, if we isolate ourselves from environmental influences, ways and uh, situations that infiltrate into our heart and pollute our mind, we will also be ready to acquaint ourselves with the word of God by studying it, by being in the environment of the fellowship. And when we do like that, we will keep the purity of our hearts as long as we remain in those environments. It is a case of we, in individual determine what he wants. The woman being have been raised in such a way, they, they are you. So the prophet must stay in the wilderness. The priest being consecrated must remain in the temple. And the Christian, we, that believe the testimony of God, that must focus our attention on the things that are evil, must decide to cultivate a culture of Standing in the environment where we are not contaminated by filthiness, I must ensure that the word of God, the written word of God, we acquaint ourselves on a daily basis. And also to be sure that we are in the environment or the fellowship of the people of God. Because your environment eventually will determine what goes in into you. That Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, okay, so sir, before before we call it a day, um, just a quick a quick one to give um, your word of advice to our viewer. Here is my cancer. Result of experiences in life. There are some things that people consider to be. They will say that does it need go too much like that? Jesus prayed for the believer. He said, Lord, I do not say you should remove them from the world, but you should keep them from the evil one. That is to say that we are in the world. We are working with people. We have families surrounding us. We have so many environments around us. And because it is necessary that a people we be the mouth of God upon this face of the earth. They will be the prophets, 
they will be the power of God to declare his glory and to be declare his power. It is very essential that a people begin to consecrate themselves to God and keep themselves within the environment that allow, enable them to retain the purity of their hearts. And, and by this, there are some things that may be legitimate, but that for the sake of the pursuit of the testimony of Jesus, we simply give them up as a sacrifice. For instance, some people cannot uh, distinguish between social gathering, cultural gathering, and Christian gathering. People that flow without limitation in all these directions, we have their conscience, we have their mind polluted with all manner of things. It is just essential that today a people must consecrate itself to maintain this purity of heart so that the glory of God, as we are expecting it, will flow through a people that are dedicated to God. And this is my concern. It is time for a people begin to consider it as something that is very, very essential, very, very fundamental to our relationship with God in the time where we are in. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And thank you for this very hour, for this opportunity given to say a little thing on this very vast uh, subject of purity in heart. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we also want to appreciate you for your contribution on this subject matter. We say God bless you, sir. And um, thank you very much. We'll bring thank you, you back. Thank you. Yeah, we shall we'll bring you back um, next time to consider another subject matter. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. And God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You're welcome, sir. Yes. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Have a great day, sir. Our guest for today had been an Ajakuta based engineer and minister of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Engineer team at the bio. Comfort. You have the microphone, so see what you want to say. <laughs> All right, we call it quits at this time. Let's hope your heart is pure in deep so that you will see God. On behalf of all of us here, we are Ambassador from Timothy and Comfort Isaac, wishing you well in your Christian work with the Lord. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye now. This is SWBN TV. Be